Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's having an amazing week. In today's video, I am sharing with you everything that I carry in my hair kit. Now, before we get started, there is a couple things that I wanted to say. The first thing is that I am not a hairstylist in the traditional sense, meaning I do not cut and color hair. I am what is considered a session stylist, so I show up to work, I style hair. So a lot of the products that I have in my kit are products that work for me for session styling. The other thing that I wanted to say is if you are somebody that is watching that is building your hair kit, or your makeup kit, when you're watching my videos or any other videos that you're watching on YouTube, please take a minute to think about if the products that I'm talking about are going to work for you. Just because there are certain products and tools that I carry in my kit, this doesn't mean that you have to run out and grab everything. Not everybody does the same type of work. Not everybody's gonna have access to the same products. Not everybody is going to be able to afford hair products that are sold at Sephora or high-end salons. And that's totally okay. You will see in this video today that I carry a mix of products. I have hair products from the drugstore, I have hair selling products from Sephora, I have hair selling products from salons. So it really comes down to what is going to work for you, what is easy for you to purchase, and what works for the type of work that you're doing. So please think about this when you're watching my video or any other videos. Don't just blindly run out and buy something because someone recommends it to you. It might not work for the type of hairstyling or makeup that you're doing. So please keep that in mind when you're watching any of these videos. I carry all all of my hair products in a Zuka bag. Most of you will probably know what a Zuka bag is. It's just something that works for me. I'm gonna try to put a picture of it right here. Hopefully I'll be able to do this when I edit this video. A couple of other things that are not necessarily specific tools but that you wanna have in your kit that I have. The first thing is a really great extension cord. This is a really long extension cord as you can see and you wanna make sure that you have a surge protector. I don't have it with me right here but I have also like one of those industrial extension cords like the really long orange ones. Those are very handy to have. Sometimes there's not enough outlets for everybody. Sometimes sets that you're gonna be on don't have extra extension cords. So please make sure you remember to purchase a really good extension cord for yourself. A couple other really important things to have, the heat resistant mats that you put your hot tools on. And I would also recommend bringing a towel. Oftentimes I bring a huge beach towel. It's actually a Justin Bieber beach towel, which usually is really funny and people get a kick out of it. It's really important to have these in your kit because you do not want to burn or damage anything that you're setting your hot tools on. This is really important, especially when you're going into people's homes. You do not want to damage anything. So oftentimes too, you might not even have a flat tabletop to work off of and you might have to work off your Zuka bag or you might have to put things on the floor and you don't want your stuff touching the floor. So it's good to bring mats like this and a couple towels, so a big towel and a small towel as well. A few other odds and ends that are really handy to have are these guys. I don't know what the actual technical term is for these. You can find these usually at the dollar stores where I I get them. They're really helpful, especially if you do bridal to do updo. Sometimes your model or talent just doesn't have enough hair. This happens all the time. So they're great to do like low side buns. If you want somebody that wants a higher messy bun like this, you can use these to help fill out the hair. I keep about, I think, how many do I have? I think I have six of these. So I have three blonde and three brunette and I usually get them in smaller sizes and I have ones that are even smaller than this and they look like little mini donuts. So these are really great things to have and they're not expensive to get either. So throw a couple of these in your hair kits, especially if you're doing bridal. Other things that you wanna have in your kit that you're probably not thinking of right now, especially if you're working in television and film or if you're working on maybe photo shoots where wigs are involved, you wanna make sure that you have wig caps. These are really important. You wanna have a variety of colors. These come in really handy. I've gone to shoots where they'll say, oh, actually we're gonna put a wig on this model today here's the wig can you put this on for us so you put your wig cap on get your wig on pin your wig in and you're all set to go you'll also have times where you will be called to source a wig for your talents so you want to make sure that you always have wig caps these are really handy to have you want to make sure you have a hair dryer in your kit this is a must-have and you want to make sure you have this nozzle attachment and you also want to make sure you have a diffuser as well diffuser is good to have if you're working with talent that has curly hair and you want to keep their curly hair you can put a little product in wet it down and then um, diffuse the hair to keep the natural curl. This is not the best hair dryer, I'll tell you the truth. I wish I had something a little bit lighter. Actually, I wish I had the Dyson hair dryer. I've been dying to try that, but it's like five or six hundred dollars, so probably not gonna happen right now. I will find out what brand this is and I will link to this hair dryer that I have just so you can see. It comes in handy, it's hot enough, it has a couple heat settings, it has a cooling setting on it, so it's good enough for now. I think I picked this one up actually at Sally Beauty, so I'll 
I'll try to provide the link for you but make sure you get a good hair dryer that has a really long cord and that is not too heavy this one I actually do find a little bit heavy but what can you do it works and it does the job now let's get into um, curling irons and flat irons I have a number of curling irons here the brand that I usually go with are the hotshot tools ones I love them they're very cheap and they work really well this is my flat iron again I'm not sure what brand this is I think it's it's something that I picked up from Sally Beauty. I've had this one for a long time. This is about an inch size. I also would recommend getting one of those tiny mini flat irons. My Hot Shot Tools one just burnt out. I got it as a free gift like six or seven years ago. I need to replace it. So that's something that is on my to-do list for this week. But just those tiny little flat irons, perfect for uh, fine tuning and detailing here around the face for updos, great for men. This is a Cortex curling wand. I'm not sure what size this is. This is just a really tiny wand. I have had this curling wand for years. This size is really important to have in your kit. If you are working with somebody that has really tight curls, this is the perfect tool to use to just clean up and reshape some of the finer curls. So this, although you might not use it every day, is something that really comes in handy. Get something that is really tiny in terms of a curling wand. These are my Hot Shot Tools ones. I have a three quarter inch, a one inch, and a one and a quarter inch, and I'll provide links to all of these. These come in so handy. They work really well. They're affordable and and um, they have lasted me years and years. Just remember any tools or hot tools or brushes or anything that you have in your hair kits, especially with the curling irons, you wanna make sure that you are cleaning them weekly because they will not work as well when they are dirty and the same thing goes for the flat irons. You wanna make sure you clean all these things once a week, including the handles, because the handles can get disgusting. And I have seen some makeup artists and hairstylists out there with really disgusting handles, so keep your stuff clean, especially the barrels of your curling irons and your flat iron. Moving on to hair brushes, I have all of my hair brushes in this Zuka bag right here. I keep all of my hair brushes and hair product in these Zuka bags. If anything leaks, these uh, protect anything from leaking out of the bags and onto the rest of the bag and onto my combs and brushes. So this is the reason why I use these. I'm not one to carry a ton of brushes, so I'll quickly go through them now and show you what I have and you can decide if it's something that you need for your kit. You need to get some hair clips. These are really handy for sectioning off hair, pinning it up when you're working in sections if you need to work quickly if you're doing updos. Also want to make sure to have a detangling brush. I'll use something like this or this one here to detangle. Really important to have before you start styling the hair. You need to make sure that the hair is tangle free. If you're working from wet hair especially, tangle free hair is very important so get a detangling brush. Having a vented brush for doing blowouts is really important. You want to make sure you have these in a couple sizes. I have one like this and then I have one in a smaller size. These two are the only sizes that I work with. These ones are the ones that are square. For me, they work really well. I can get right to the root of the hair when I'm blow drying, so a vented brush is really important to have. You want to, of course, have a couple of combs. You may want to throw in a carbon comb. You want combs that are not going to create static when you are teasing. You also want combs with these picks on the end. Again, really helpful for sectioning the hair. I love a comb with this kind of pick on the end as well. I'm hoping you guys can see that. This is really great for teasing. It's great for working with curls, so really helpful. And then you can have something like this, which has almost like a two prong thing happening. These are great for teasing. So find combs that work for you in terms of ones that don't create static in the hair, ones that you can use for teasing, ones that you can use for sectioning, and then it's also important to have a pick in the hair if you need to pick out any hair or if you need to fine tune and stylize anybody's curls. You also wanna have some bore bristle brushes. These are really important to have. They're great for smoothing the hair. They're great for teasing the hair. They're great for brushing through curls. They're just great for brushing through the hair in general. So really important to have a nice quality bore bristle brush in your kit. This one is my Mason Pearson brush. I don't know if I've talked about this before in any other videos or if I've blogged about this, I can't remember. Mason Pearson brush, really, really expensive. This little guy here I think cost me $100. I have to say I really do love it and I do find that I run to this brush all the time and it works for like 1 million things. So to me, I've used this pretty much every day that I've been on set so the investment is worth it but just keep that in mind you don't have to have super top of the line or bristle brush if you're just starting out this one here this is the Evo or EVO brand I really like these brushes they're very reasonably priced they're about half the price of the Mason Pearson there's a couple different shapes to them this one I use a lot for teasing and for updos same thing with this one this is just a wider brush so it's great to brush through the hair it's great to brush out curls so I will link to this brand because I really do like these brushes 
brushes. You also are going to want to have a smaller round brush. You can have a vented one. This one I use a lot. It's not vented, but it works well for me. Again, I have no idea what brand this is. So I've had these for so long, but a smaller round brush. It's great, especially if you're somebody that's doing hair for bridal, like grandma hair or any hair that is shorter just to give it a little shape and volume. So find yourself a small either vented brush or just a round brush that you can blow dry with. I also have a wig brush. This is really important to have to brush through synthetic extensions and wigs. So if you can find one of these, you might want to add that into your kit in case you're working with wigs or extensions. Two other things that I would recommend having in your kit, a brush like this. This is actually a brush that is used to clean other brushes. You can also use a toothbrush for this if you want. So get one of these when you are cleaning your brushes at the end of every week. You want to make sure you can safely get out the hair that builds up in there without damaging your hairbrush. This is a shaving brush and this is a really handy tool to have. This is a great tool if you're doing editorial or test where you want that soft romantic look. I've used this for updos as well. You can take a shaving brush like this. I'll demonstrate it on myself even though it's not going to be as impactful because I don't have any hair but you basically just brush forward those baby hairs and you can pull them out and you can add a little wave to them. You can straighten them out to look wispy. So a shaving brush comes in really handy for that. So those are all the brushes and pins that I have with me. Again I'm not the type of person that has a million brushes. I always end up using the same one comb and the same brush so you'll have to work through it and see what works for you. Now we're going to get into my favorite thing ever, hairspray. I love working with hairspray. It is a lifesaver on so many sets, especially if you get a good spray. I like to have a couple different sprays in my kit, so different holes and different working sprays, and I will explain to you why in just a second. So you do want to have what is called a working spray in your kit. This is the Sebastian Shaper Zero Gravity Dry Brushable Lightweight Control Hairspray. This is the one I happen to use now. I've used a million different brands, but if you're watching, get a working spray. So working sprays usually are quick dry and they can be used with hot tools. So they can be sprayed onto the hair and then you can heat style them immediately after. They will provide a little bit of heat protection. They will provide a sort of light control and hold to the hair. And sometimes you will get ones that have an anti-humectant, meaning that it protects the hair from humidity. You are also going to need a spray with more hold to finish the styles. This one here, the Kenra spray, this is the Kenra volume spray. It's a super hold finishing spray. It has the number 25 on it. I don't know what that means. I have been loving this product. It's been really great for bridal updos. It's been great for shooting outdoors. So this is a finishing spray that I am loving right now. From the drugstore, this is the L'Oreal Studio Pro. It's called the Locket Pro Ultra Strong Hairspray. This has dual hold control, 48 hour endurance, anti-frizz and lightweight. Great spray for anybody doing bridal or if you're out there and you need to create hairstyles, they're gonna last quite some time if you're working in warmer climates. These two finishing sprays are amazing. Now we're going to move on to all of the hair products I have in my kit. Now this is a ton of product. I don't think I'm going to go through all of these individually, but there are different categories of hair styling products that you want to have in your kit. So I'm going to run through some of the more important ones for you and I will organize all of this information in the description box below. Where I am at right now with my hair kit, and I was a little bit hesitant to do this video because I'm not so happy with how everything's organized, but as I change it and as I get a little bit better organized with my hair kit, I will let you know and I will do an updated video. And I I think as artists we're always rejigging and redesigning things because I want things to be really efficient for me and I want to have products that are good quality that work well and I want to try to carry fewer products so what I'm doing with my hair kit specifically is I'm buying these travel sizes of different brands so I can get familiar with a few different brands and not spend a million dollars the first thing that you need to have in your hair kits is a dry shampoo you can use any dry shampoo that you want you can use the spray you can use whatever works for you just make sure that you do have a dry shampoo I'm trying right now the one from way. This is just a tiny little size. You can purchase this at Sephora. It's a dry shampoo foam and I've been loving it. I have also used this dry shampoo spray from Chlorine. So these are the two that I'm using right now, but dry shampoo must have for your hair kit. The other thing you want to have is also not a product specifically, but you do want to have an empty spray bottle to mist the hair. So get a nice size spray bottle that you can use if you need to wet the hair before styling it really important thing to have as well. You want to make sure that you have a good pomade in your kit. This is great for styling men's hair for grooming. It's great for taming flyaways. This is my absolute favorite one. I'm going to tell you straight up, there is nothing better than this. I've tried so many different ones. This is the Davinus one. This is the strong molding clay. It's for a firm matte finish. I will link to this. I'm going to show you. I use this thing right down to the end of the container every single time. It is my favorite product for men's grooming as well. I use this in bridal updos just to tame some of the 
flyaways. Such a good product to have. So make sure you get a pomade that has some control and you can do one that's matte and one that's shiny if you want for that sleeker look. If you're working on anything where your talent needs sleeker hair look, if they're a male model, get something like that. I also have some travel size hairsprays in my kit when I'm on set. I don't like to lug around the big uh, container of hairspray. Right now I'm trying the KMS. This is Hair Stay. It's the Dry Extreme Hairspray and the Kevin Murphy Session Spray. Both are really good. These will save your life and your back when you're working on set. You are going to need serums and oils in your kit. This is going to be really important for working with people that have really dry, coarse hair. If you're working with ethnic hair, you're going to want to add serums and oils to the hair to get a nice sheen to the hair. If you are creating that wet look for a photo shoot, oftentimes this is done with hair oils so it doesn't dry up and you don't have to keep spraying your model with water. So let me go through some of the serums and oils that I have in my kit. Of course, the standard Moroccan oil. This one is the Moroccan oil treatment oil and I use the light textured one in my kit. I have another Davinus product here. This is the Invisible Serum. I also have from Living Proof, it's called Fresh Cut Split End Mender. This is a split end treatment that I'll just throw in the hair after styling if I notice ends are frizzy. I've got a product here from Cake. It's called the Locksmith. It's called a Luster Boosting Soft and Smoothing Frizz Fighting Style Reviving Feather Light Totally to Die For Dry Conditioner. So I love to use this type of product on people with blonde hair that's been really over processed or if their hair has been bleached out or over colored. I'll put a little bit of this on the ends and then I'll go into styling. So dry conditioner sprays are really important as well if you can find those. Another way product, this is the Rose Hair and Body Oil. The reason I wanted to get this because this is like a two in one. You can use this on the hair and then you can also use this to moisturize on the body. So any products that you can get in your kit that are multi-purpose and great for multitasking are really good. Serums are also important as I said for curlier hair and coarse hair. Right here I have the Paul Mitchell. This is just a liquid curl definer. You might want to get something like that in your kit. I've got the Mixed Chicks Hair Silk. This is such a great product too if you're working with hair that is a little bit coarse and curly. Really important to have products in your kit for all hair types. The Mixed Chicks brand is a, is a brand that I love and I've worked with for quite some time. My favorite I think is this hair silk product. It saved me on so many different jobs. This product can be used on wet or dry hair and comes in really handy. So another serum oil type of thing that you can use. Another category of product that you might want to have in your kit are products that add volume so you can blow dry in some volume to the hair. These are really helpful and I think I will say they're almost a necessity in your kit. One of my favorite products that I don't have in this bag right now because it's actually stuck in my set bag is the Moroccan oil volumizing mousse. You just spray it on the root and you blow dry. These are great for just spot blow drying as well. This one is a soft hold volumizer that I've been loving from AG Hair Care. You just spray a little bit in and you blow dry it through. So try to find a good volumizing product. You're going to be working with a ton of clients that have limp hair that won't take a curl, that have no volume, that looks very flat, and you will need to blow dry some product into their hair with clients like these. So do find a volumizer, either a mousse or a spray that you can use. Another must have category of product for your hair kit, texture sprays. Everybody has a texture spray now. I love the Joyco Hair Shake. This has come in so handy for me. It gives you that beachy texture. It's really great for updos. I'm also using another way product, the Wave Spray. This is really good as well. Great for that beachy hair. Kenra has a texturizing spray that's amazing. Of course, everybody knows the Orbe texturizing spray. I wish I could afford to have that in my kit, but I can't. So that's why I use products like this. So definitely get some sort of spray to add texture to the hair. You're going to be doing so many loose, tousled looks. You're going to be doing updos, and these texturizing sprays are going to be really handy. There are a few other products that I'm going to mention, but I will put these in the description box below. I do not want to bore you with every single product that I have in my kit, but just to give you that idea of the types of products that you need to have, that is what is important, and that's the takeaway from this video. So trust me, if you are feeling overwhelmed and you already feel like it's too many things and you can't remember, I will organize all of this information for you in the description box below. Now let's move on to something I am like obsessed with organizing, my hairpins. As I said before, the organization of my kit right now, it's not perfect. It's not up to my usual standards, but I will show you anyway. These are all of the hairpins that I carry in my kit. If you go to a home hardware store, if you go to a sports store, if you go into the fishing section, you will find containers like these. If you go into a craft store, into the 
beading section or a section where they sell stuff to make necklaces and bracelets. They will have organizers that will be the perfect shape for your hairpins. If you are watching right now and you are building your hair kit, you need to organize your hairpins. This is gonna save you so much time when you're working. Don't sleep on that. Don't just bring boxes of hairpins. I know some people do that. That can be a little bit messy and it can get unorganized and you will end up with pins all over your hair kit and your bag and all over your station where you're working. So try to organize your hairpins. I'm gonna start with this container because it's gonna be an easy one to go through. I'm hoping you can kind of get an idea of how I have things organized here. So I have my metal clips and pins in this container. I have two sizes. This is a smaller metal clip. These are sometimes called alligator clips. These pins come in handy for setting hair. If you have smaller curls that you need to set, you can curl the hair and then pin them in. If you have certain pieces of the hair that you need to keep back and in a certain way, you can use them. I use this type of pin on myself when I want to keep this little piece straight so I will have that in my hair as I'm doing my makeup. So these little pins can come in handy. You will see when makeup artists are prepping models, they have little foam things in these to keep their hair back from their face. So these types of pins come in really handy. And again, you want to have both sizes. These longer ones are called a duckbill pin or a duckbill clip if you need to search it. Now these are definitely a must have for your kit as well as the small ones. These are great for holding larger curls together. If you are creating those vintage old Hollywood waves or shadow waves where the hair has to be really structured, this is really popular for film and television. It's also very popular for bridal. You need these longer clips to hold that shape in place. Metal clips, both sizes, really important to have. Before I get into all of the specific hair pins, please make sure that when you purchase hair pins that you have them to suit different hair colors. You're gonna to wanna to have light, medium, and dark hair pins for each style of pin that you're gonna be purchasing for your kit. So these are long bobby pins. These come in handy for rolls, updos, for securing veils if you're doing bridal. You also wanna have the regular hair pins in a larger size. Again, great for securing updos, good for securing veils, so make sure you have a couple of the larger size pins. I don't use these often, but they do come in handy if you're doing bridal, so I don't have a ton in my kit. This is pretty much all I have. I also carry these pins. I found these at Sally Beauty here in Toronto. If you can find these, I would recommend grabbing them. They're great for updos. You can basically do like a messy bun in two seconds with these. You put up the hair and they just kind of stick in and they pin into the hair. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but they're really great for holding hair up and they work very quickly. So they're great to have on set if you need to do something in a pinch or if you need to do something and put up the hair really quickly. This is my bigger pin box. This is pretty much the pin box I work out of all the time when I'm doing bridal or I I am on set so this is what it looks like in the bottom here I have elastics and in the top I have my regular size bobby pins and regular hair pins these are my dark bobby pins these are my mid-tone pins so brown and any kind of weird color coppery ones and these are my lighter ones I've got blonde and I also have bobby pins in here for gray hair as well so that's my lighter section in these three sections I have both the regular bobby pins and the hair pins so they're each sectioned off there. If you are working with children, you may want to pick up some accessories that are suitable for kids. So clips with little bows in them, little headbands. I have a few things that I keep in my kit for when I work with kids. Now I'm gonna to talk to you a bit about hair extensions. This bag here is actually full of hair extensions that I use in my kit. The extensions in this kit are extensions that I have purchased throughout the years. They're all human hair, they're very good quality. I've sewn a lot of them together myself. In the market in Toronto where I work, because I am a freelancer and I'm doing different jobs all the time, the extensions that I have in my kit here are very basic extensions. They're a 14 inch or a 16 inch extension. I have like a few shades of brown and a few blonde shades. These extensions are my just in case extensions. I wanna share with you what I carry in my kit, what works for me, and I do have extensions. They sit in my car most of the time, but they're good to have just in case. And as I said, I've invested in them throughout the years. If I found ones on sale, I've purchased them. Brown, black, a couple blondes, and the shorter lengths just to give fullness. Extensions are are something that you can add to your kit but again do this over time don't feel like from watching this video and because I have them and I use them you need to go out and buy this bag full of extensions this is years in the making it's a lot of money invested and really I'm showing you this and I'm sharing this with you so you have an awareness that there are hairstylists and makeup artists out there who do travel with extensions so you do want to know that that's something that does happen so you're not surprised if a client asks if you have extensions or not 
you're already prepared and you already know, so you can choose to say, yeah, I have them, and just go run out and buy them, or you can say, no, I don't, sorry, and move on to the next. So totally up to you. Again, I just wanted to show you what I have. I'm not gonna go through all of them. I will give you just a general idea of the colors and lengths of extensions that I keep in my kit, just for your information only. I'm hoping this video was helpful for you and not too overwhelming, and if you are somebody that is out there and you're building your makeup kit and hair kit, that this is some great information for you, make sure to do your own research. As I said at the beginning of the video, what works for me may not work for you take into account products that you can afford products that are easy to purchase and products that work for you based on the majority of work that you do and build your hair kit that way thank you so much for watching and i will see you next wednesday bye everybody